I'm George Flynn and you're watching In-Depth TV. You know, when you've got all of these things that you've believed all your life and you've followed all of these rules all of your life, then later on you find out these were wrong. So some of the people joke around in, in schools and say, what we're going to tell you, what we're going to teach you, 50% of it or half of it is wrong. The big question is, which half? So that's a, that's a common joke, and, but I, I want you to know these are some of the things, and it's sort of like medical myth busters. And the way I got this, I was reading the New York Times, and they had some articles in there about things that were, you know, widely held theories that are contradicted now. And so I did a little research and found out some of these are right. And I'd just like to present a few of them to you that uh, you know, were usually thought to be correct and maybe incorrect. The first of these is peanut allergies. Now, in my family, I've got uh, kids with peanut allergies. And they were thought to occur whether or not a child is exposed to peanuts before age three. Now, they occur whether or not they're opposed, you know, exposed to it. But pediatricians have been counseling parents to keep babies away from peanuts for the first three years of life. Well, as it turns out, children exposed to peanuts before they were even one year old have no greater risk of peanut allergies. Now, there is another idea behind this because a lot of kids, and I've seen it, you know, I'm a radiologist, I see x-rays, a lot of kids will aspirate peanuts and they get caught in a bronchus. And once they get caught there, the kids can get pneumonia and that kind of thing. So there is a reason to not, you know, have children eat peanuts before a certain age, but it may not be due to the peanut allergy. So there are reasons. So pediatricians have great cause to not eat peanuts. Well, you know, tell kids don't eat peanuts because they stick them in their nose and they can aspirate them and things like that. But the allergies, that's been called into question. And we don't have the answer yet. I just wanted you to know about that. Well, what about fish oil? Fish oil uh, and heart disease. And we've all been heard, been told, eat fish oils, your omega-3s. Well, the fact is the research, the latest research is fish oil does not reduce the risk of heart disease. You know, at one point, the notion that fish fats prevented heart trouble seemed, it seemed logical because people whose diets contained a lot of fatty fish seem to have a lower instance of heart disease. Well, fatty fish contains these uh, oils called omega-3 fatty acids. And we've all heard about omega-3 fatty acids. You see them all over the uh, pharmacies, the drugstores, the, uh, the grocery stores. And omega-3 supplements lower the level of triglycerides and high levels of triglycerides are linked to increased uh, heart disease. Not to mention that omega-3 fatty acids seem to reduce inflammation. And that is a key feature in heart attacks. So this all seemed logical. So somebody did a trial of 12,500 people at risk for heart trouble. And they had daily omega-3 supplements and it did not prevent or protect against heart disease. So that is something that we really need to think about. Is this omega-3 supplement, is it helping or not? Well, we do know that it does uh, change the triglycerides in a better form. So we, we, just, need to, we just need to look at this Make sure we, we look at this and we need to look at that trial. I just want you to know the controversies are still going on. So there's, there's this idea 
that teenagers, if they will carry a lifelike doll around, it, it will deter pregnancies. The, the dolls, you know, some schools give them to them and the doll has to, you know, cries and you have to take care of it and it will keep, keep a computer chip in there of what you did and that kind of thing. And the dolls yell and scream and they need to be changed and cuddled. And the idea that girls would learn how much work was involved in caring for an infant. Now, they did a, a study, once again, here's another study, that found that girls who were told to carry around infant simulators actually were slightly more likely to become pregnant than girls who did not get the dolls. What do you make of that? The girls that were carrying around the dolls were slightly more likely. Now, was that a statistical significant idea? Did that really work? Were these studies, we've got to really look into these. I just want you to know these ongoing controversies are out there. Ginkgo biloba, memory loss, and dementia. Does ginkgo biloba help with memory loss and dementia? Well, the supplement is made from the leaves of the ginkgo trees. And the ginkgo trees are, you know, they have these nice leaves. I think they are kind of yellow leaves. It's a beautiful leaf. And the supplement's made from these leaves, and it's been widely used in Chinese medicine, ancient Chinese medicine. And it's still promoted as a way to pres preserve your memory and, and help you with uh, not having dementia. Well, there was a large study. Once again, here we go with a large study. And it was published in 2008. And it definitively showed that the supplement was useless for that purpose. Yet Ginkgo still pulls in millions and millions of dollars in sales. What happened? Did people just not get the message that it doesn't work? Or are they being sold that it does work? Okay, emergency room patients, acute pain. What helps? And you know, we talk about the opioid addictions, and the idea is a single dose of oral opioids is no better than drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen. Now, we've got to talk about this one because the opioid crisis is here. Opioids are very powerful drugs, but a clinical trial showed that much safer alternatives relieve pain just as well among emergency room patients. And we've had physicians on with us that talk about using uh, these other alternative drugs for pain control after surgery rather than using opioids. So maybe there's something to this, and we've got to study this, but I just want you to be aware of what's going on in the medical world. Testosterone treatment. Well, does it help older men retain their memory? Some men have lower levels of testosterone, or on the TV it's called low T. And some men have memory problems. And there were a lot of early studies that hinted, just hinted, that middle-aged men with higher testosterone levels seem to have better preserved tissue in some parts of their brains. And older men with high levels of testosterone also seem to do better on tests of mental functioning. So there was a rigorous clinical trial, and that means a very widely used and controlled study that showed that testosterone was no better than a sugar pill or a placebo in helping older men avoid memory loss. So there you have that idea. Now, what's another idea? Well, if you have asthma, 
to protect against asthma attacks, we've been told to keep your house free of dust mites and mice and cockroaches. Well, the advice from leading medical groups has been to rid your home of these pests if you or your child has asthma. The theory was that we have allergic reactions and we call them uh, reactions that can trigger asthma attacks. But intensive pest management in homes with children sensitized to mouse allergen did nothing to reduce the frequency of the asthma attacks. And that was reported in 2017. So maybe being hyper clean doesn't help out with asthma attacks. We all try to keep our calorie trackers and our step counters, uh, you know, in line and we, we know how many steps we take and how many calories we eat. Well, do they help you lose weight or not? In fact, dieters may actually be better off without what we call digital assistance. There, are, there was a study, once again, 470 dieters followed for two years and they wore these tracking devices that tracked the number of steps they took and the calories they burned, and they actually, you ready for this, lost less weight than those who just followed standard advice of, you know, get enough exercise, eat sensibly. So the tracking didn't seem to help. Now I know a lot of you are saying, well, let me take off this tracker now and quit, quit messing with the, counting the steps. Well, remember, your physician is taking care of you personally. So anything we talk about in this entire show should be followed up with your personal physician, nurse practitioner, healthcare provider. Make sure that you are following their recommendations rather than just, you know, these kind of studies that are going on. I, this is just for educational purposes so that you know the controversies that are out there. What if you have a, a bad knee and somebody says you've torn your meniscus, you've had an MRI or something, and you've had a bad knee? And people, we talk about uh, surgery for that. Well, we say try physical therapy first and surgery later. There was another study uh, and the, but remember, there are about 460,000 patients in the U.S. that get surgery each year to fix a knee, knee cartilage, fix the tears, often because of osteoarthritis. The tear is painful, and many patients fear that if it's not surgically treated, the pain will stay on and on and on with them. But when patients with a torn meniscus and moderate arthritis they, there was another study, and they were randomized to six months of physical therapy or surgery. Both groups improved, and to the same extent. So both groups got better. These are some ideas that I wanted you to understand. You know, your physician, your nurse practitioner, your orthopedic surgeon, as far as knees go, your person that's taking care of your personal health is the best information and advice. And my advice to you is go to them with these questions. Go to them with reg for your regular checkups. Don't just go when you're feeling sick and when you're feeling bad. Go for your checkup. Get your blood work done. See how you're doing and prevent a lot of this. I believe in prevention. And when you get sick, then of course treat it. But let's try to prevent these diseases. I'm George Flynn. You've been watching In-Depth TV. I appreciate it. And I will see you next time.